Gabriel, you okay. are online. The next presentation is called Massive Multiple Input, Multiple Output Demodulation Aided by Neural Networks. And the presenter will be Gabriel Polvani from the State University of Londrina in Paraná, Brazil. Uh, also with Victor Kreuzfeld and Taufika Brau. All of them from, from Brazil, from Sao Paulo and Londrina. And I don't know if you want to speak in English, in Portuguese or in Spanish. Just present yourself and go ahead. Remember that you have 15 minutes. Recuerda que tenemos 15 minutos para la presentación. Okay, thank you. I'm going to present in English. Okay. And okay, excellent. I'll, I will share my, my screen here. My name is Gabriel Polvani. I am from uh, State University of Londrina. I am graduating in electrical engineering. And I am going to present the accepted paper, Massive MIMO Demodulation Aided by Neural Networks. And this work was developed at State University of Londrina, and uh, it was developed with Victor Kreisfeld and Professor Dr. Taufiki Abram. Uh, this is my first research work, so, uh, and it was supported by Fundação Araucária. Basically, the Motivation behind this work is that the densification of cellular networks in the last few years is leading to system models that are getting harder and harder to obtain analytically. And that requires a different approach. Uh, so machine learning techniques emerges as a good alternative to deal with this complexity increase, uh, cooperating with them or replacing them with uh, approximate ways. Uh, in this work, we propose a method to demodulate symbols in a massive MIMO scenario aided by neural networks that can replace their conventional approach. In summary, the proposed method uh, can replace the conventional approach with lower computational complexity and without performance losses. Uh, first, I'm going to present the system model. Uh, basically, we consider the uplink in a massive MIMO system with a single cell. And this, um, the system model is described by equation one, where Y is the received vector at the base station. Uh, capital H is the channel matrix that contains all the channel coefficients between all K users and N antennas. Uh, X is the vector of transmitted symbols by all of the users and these symbols are chosen from a modulation alphabet that here we denoted by uh, calligraphic A here. And finally, N is the vector of additional uh, white Gaussian noise at the receiver entry, okay? Um, so after the reception, we considered that the N received samples uh, are combined using a zero forcing combiner which is a well-known approach to mitigate interference between users. This operation is described by equation two. For simplicity, we consider that the receptor, the, the receiver, the base station, has perfect channel state information, which, which means that he knows the channel matrix H. Uh, then, after this operation, the combined symbols are ready to be demodulated. First, I'm going to present the hard decisor demodulator, which we are going to uh, consider as a benchmark for, for this work. And uh, the decision rule for that demodulator is denoted by, is represented in uh, equation three, where D is the Euclidean distance between a symbol S from the modulation alphabet and the kth combined symbol that we denoted here by X hat K. Uh, basically, this decision rule means that the, the modulated symbol is considered as the symbol from the alphabet uh, calligraphic A that is near to the combined symbol. And in, in other words, uh, in other words, uh, the symbol is chosen uh, by if he is closer to the to the combined symbol. Uh, generically, the adopted neural network has the topology described by figure two. Uh, we consider two input 
neurons, which will receive the real and imaginary parts of a combined symbol. And, uh, and the output layer has NL neurons. We considered that NL is basically the minimal number of bits needed to represent the all the symbols from the modulation alphabet that we are using. So, for example, if we consider a 4KM, uh, only two neurons are enough to represent all the four or the all the four symbols from that alphabet. Okay, and uh, for simplicity too, we consider that the hidden layers has the same amount of neurons than than the output layer. Uh, and the activation functions we are going to change for two different cases, and I'm going to uh, tell which functions did we choose uh, in the following. But before, uh, I need to explain how the training process uh, was uh, considered. First, we generated a data, a data set with samples at a fixed training SNR, signal to noise ratio, which we denoted here by gamma TR. Then uh, we initialized key, uh, key neural networks with random values of bias and weights and trained all of them using the same data set. Uh, the training process considered a backpropagation algorithm, okay? And uh, after the networks were trained, we saved all of them in a set that we call here by calligraphy N gamma TR uh, set that we are going to use for the numerical results. And then this process is repeated for D different data sets uh, with samples always in the same uh, training signal to noise ratio. And these all neural networks were saved at the same set. Uh, the cardinality of this set will always be qui key times d. And, and uh, uh, for that case, we consider that d is equal to four data sets and qui is equal to 16 neural networks. So the cardinality of our network set is equal to 64. Um, for simplicity, we considered a 4KM alphabet and studied two topologies of neural networks. As we can see in the table one, the parameters of both types of neural networks are the same, except for the activation function in the hidden layer. Uh, for the first case, we considered a hyperbolic tangent function in the hidden layer. And in the second case, we considered a sigmoid function as the activation fu function of the hidden layer. Uh, both, uh, both functions can be seen uh, here in the bottom of the page. And what's important to note here is that the hyperbolic tangent function outputs values between minus one and one while the sigmoid function of outputs varies between zero and one only. Uh, for the numerical results, we first submitted all the trained neural, neural networks to an online test, evaluating their performance for different values of test S and R. That uh, not necessarily means that we are testing them at the same SNR, the SNR that they were trained, okay? Mm. Results are shown in figure four for the case where the activation function in the hidden layer were hyperbolic tangent, and in figure five for the case or the activation function of the hidden layer were sigmoid. Uh, the upper and lower quartiles of the bare values obtained for all sets of neural networks are uh, limited by this shaded area that we can note here, and the Lines represent the median values of bare obtained for the sets of network of the neural networks already uh, trained. Okay, and the benchmark that we consider here, the harsh decisor, is denoted is represented by the black dotted line in all of those figures. So, uh, as we can see, for where where when the activation function in the hidden layer is the hyperbolic tangent at higher training SNRs, the probability to obtain a neural network that performs well increases because we can note here that the difference between upper and lower partils is minimal. 
uh, also the median of the values obtained matches the benchmark, which is good. On the other hand, when a sigmoid function is considered in the hidden layer, and the same behavior of the uh, hyperbolic tangent case occurs. When the higher the SNR, the training SNR, uh, the most, uh, the higher the probability to obtain a neural network that performs uh, well with low variability. But in that case, we note that the median of the values doesn't match the benchmark that we could achieve with the hyperbolic tangent. So to justify these performance losses, we evaluated how the areas of the decision regions that were defined in the training process were. Uh, were. So for that, we calculated the, the percentage of the constellation that was associated to each one of the symbols from the 4KM alphabet. So in that case, the closest to 25%, the better, because we are using uh, four symbols and we are, we are considering that, that they are equipropable. So uh, each symbol could each symbol has to have 25% uh, of the constellation as uh, as a, an area to 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 get identified. Okay. Um, this indicates that uh, the generated neural networks do not prefer to decide for one symbol over others, which is good because the symbols are equi equipropable. As we can see in this figure, uh, in the blue line, uh, for higher training SNR, as we showed in the previous figure, the generated decision regions are balanced, equals to 25%, as expected. Uh, on the other hand, the tendency of the sigmoid, uh, of the neural networks trained with sigmoid activation function in the hidden layer, uh, is to generate different sizes uh, of decision regions. And, and that degrades the, the, the performance because uh, it's like the, the decision regions were unbalanced. So the neural networks prefer to demodulate some symbols than the others, and this degrades performance. Finally, we analyzed the computational complexity of the neural network demodulation, uh, also using the harsh decisor as a benchmark we counted the number of flops needed to demodulate a single symbol using the harsh decisor and both neural network topologies. And the results are shown in the figures in, in figure seven. We needed to define a criterion to expand the number of neurons in the neural network in a way that the comparison could be as fair as possible. So for that, we considered that for all of those values uh, at the horizontal axis, uh, the, that are the the, model, the the quantity, the number of symbols in the alphabet that are considered for each point, we consider that the number of neurons in the output layer are the minimal number of neurons needed to represent all the symbols from the respective set. Um, and the number of neurons in the hidden layer is the same of the output layer. And, and we also considered only a single hidden layer for that case. Um, we note that, especially for higher modulation orders, the complexity, complexity gain of the neural network the modulators are slightly, are very uh, better than the harsh decision the modulator because we need much less flops to the modulate a single symbol. Uh, but Although of that, we must note that uh, this is just uh, a tendency. So to uh, verify that, we must do some uh, simulation results uh, to evaluate the performance of the neural networks working at these higher modulation orders to uh, verify if uh, this complexity gain can be achieved as, uh, with this ne neural network topology. Okay, so the conclusions are that in this work, we uh, the neural networks that had a hi hyperbolic function, activation function in the hidden layers uh, performs better when compared with the 
neural networks train it with the sigmoid function in the hidden layer. And this happens because the hyperbolic tangent uh, gives more flexibility to the training process because he can, uh, this function can output values between uh, negative one and one, while the sigmoid only outputs positive values between zero and one. And uh, although this topology has a significant CC complexity gain, uh, computational complexity gain for uh, higher modulation orders, we note that the gain for lower modulation orders are quite uh, small, okay? Uh, it's almost in 17.3%. And so uh, it's, uh, it shows that we can achieve, uh, so we can uh, achieve, we can probably achieve good results when expanding the uh, number of symbols in the alphabet using some topology of neural networks that uh, are proposed here. And to verify that, we want to, to, to make some uh, more simulation results to verify this idea. Finally, uh, for that problem, we note too that we also note that a classification approach can be more adequate for that problem because essentially the uh, the the modulation problem is a classification problem because you have to choose from uh, from you you have to choose a symbol from a set of a symbol. Okay, so that's a classification problem. And um, for the next steps of these studies, we aim to extend uh, this work, exploiting some uh, topics that we couldn't uh, couldn't verify in, in this paper. For example, uh, how expensive is the training process? So uh, we need to evaluate the training process too in order to obtain this, in order to train these neural networks uh, in a in, in a way faster than uh, the way that it was trained here. And uh, if we use a classification problem, uh, the number of neurons in the hidden and output layers will have to increase because we have to represent all the symbols from the modulation alphabet that, the, that is going to be used. So we want to verify how is the trade-off between uh, computational complexity and performance for that cases. And uh, as a suggestion of one of the uh, of the revisors, we can uh, include a, a way in our paper to verify if we can uh, uh, replace the zero force in combining by a uh, by a combiner aided by neural networks too, because uh, as was exploited in some papers. Machine learning can learn the channel where it operates, and it leads to uh, uh, it leads to uh, a several complexity uh, gain because we don't need to do some we don't need to make a lot of operations in the combining process. So uh, we are going to exploit different channel models models in the sequence to verify if it, this is a viable approach. So uh, my presentation was that. I hope you enjoy it. And now I am open to questions. OK, thank you very much, Gabriel. It was very clear. Congratulations for your research. And I encourage you to continue with the research line and hopefully to have uh, more insights and more publications in the near future. Thank you very much. OK, I see that there is no questions for your presentations.